Well, welcome everyone. We are so delighted that you're here for our spring town hall. It is a foggy evening here in Roanoke. As we're looking out the windows, the rain has stopped, but there are clouds rolling in over the mountains, and it really is a misty but beautiful evening. We have a great program for you tonight. There is lots of excitement and buzz here on campus. I believe we are less than 20 days remaining in the semester, so needless to say, our seniors are finishing up their classwork. Everyone is kind of getting their thoughts together to wrap up the year. And on May 19th, I'm excited, we'll welcome approximately 150 new alumni into our community as the class of 2024 celebrates their commencement. So that is an exciting milestone. And then right behind that, we look forward to welcoming you all home or reunion, which will take place at the end of May. I want to also make sure we celebrate tonight President Hinton's new recent accomplishment. Uh, she has a new book out, Leading from the Margins. And so I wanted to make sure that we congratulated her on that milestone. And we hope that you all will enjoy reading the book. And uh, we always enjoy learning from you, President Hinton, as we will tonight. We have a great program. We have a couple of students. Here with us. And thank you. Without further ado, President Hinton, we will turn it right on over to you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome home to Holland. It's so good to be with you. I'm so delighted to see so many friends in the audience this evening. As Lauren said, it's a cloudy evening here in Roanoke, and unfortunately, it was cloudy yesterday during the eclipse. But I have sunshine right next to me, both in terms of Lauren, who's on my left, and two amazing students who are on my right. We have a really fantastic evening planned for tonight. So I'm going to jump right in. We have lots and lots of good news to share with everyone. And so I want to get right into it, get everyone excited about what's happening at your home here at Holland. So we'll do a few things this evening. I'll certainly bring a few campus updates to you and share from an institutional perspective what's happening here at Collins. Then we will talk about my two absolute favorite topics, the Lavavi Oculus Comprehensive Campaign and the Lavavi Oculus Strategic Plan. I'm super excited to update you on both of those items. And then the biggest and best part of our evening is we will have a conversation with two absolutely amazing students tonight. Um, as you know by now, I believe we should always start with the Hollands mission when we think about our work here at Hollands. Hollands is bigger than any one of us. It's even bigger than all of us collectively. Hollands University is dedicated to academic excellence, creativity, belonging, and preparing students for lives of purpose. That's what I'm going to talk about this evening, how we are achieving each of those things. And as you see, our mission statement ends that we lift our eyes, Lavavi Oculos, to create a just future as we build on our past. I hope you are so proud of what we are doing at Hollands these days. Um, it's pretty fantastic. We are really excited about the end of the semester on the horizon. But at the same time, we're thinking about our next entering cohort of students. So we are striving to bring in a class of 200. We have 106 who have already said yes, and that number climbs each and every day. We are welcoming a spectacular class, the class of 2028. Now, many of you will have heard about the FAFSA, the financial aid form debacle that's unfolding. We are doing well in spite of that debacle um, that's unfolding, though many of our students have been impacted by it. We are doing everything we can to make a Holland's education affordable for families and accessible to students. And we are having good success with that. And here's a little external evidence to prove that. Since 2019, you can see that overall, there's only been three percentage points of growth in enrollment. And most of that has been a result of the public institutions across the nation. 
As you can see, private schools as well as selective liberal arts schools are facing a decline in enrollment. And yet here at Holland, we are seeing a 4.9% increase. So we are working really hard each and every day to make a Holland's education accessible and affordable. So despite the decline overall, I hope you're proud that your alma mater is continuing to do really important work at this really important time. And you can help us with that. If you know of a student who would really thrive here at Holland's, I do hope that you will refer them to us. And there are two ways that you can refer them. You can take a photo of the QR code there, or if your phone never quite works when you want it to, you can go to hollands.edu slash refer. Please note that I will be going to the website, but either way, we really do welcome your referrals for students. And in fact, if a student applies and they are referred, we, they will receive a one-time $500 grant. So please tell your story to other students or to young people in your life. Get them excited about Holland. And now I wanna tell you a few of the things that you can use as you think about telling your story and referring your students to Holland. I am so excited about the work that we are doing at Holland to ensure that our students are not only challenged and engaged in the classroom, but that they are also prepared to go out and to live and learn as young professionals. We talk about experiential learning quite a bit here at Collins, and it really does differentiate us from other institutions. At Collins, all of our students have at least one experiential learning opportunity. We define experiential learning as study abroad, undergraduate research, or an internship. And we've now collected, connected those global experiences, study abroad and internships to what's happening in the classroom. What that means is that our students are able to immediately translate what they're learning in the classroom to what they're seeing and doing out in the world. And that has tremendous outcomes for our students. So just a couple of really important points. 75% of our students will complete at least one internship during their time at Hollins. 57% of our students will go abroad at least once during their time at Hollins. That's pretty remarkable. But what's even more important is that those numbers are bound to grow. Our new core curriculum will ensure that every student has at least one experiential learning opportunity which we're really excited about. I also put a couple of other fun facts up there that I thought you might enjoy. Uh, Hollins has been rated number five as the best alumni network in the United States and number 12 for best school internships. And thanks to your generosity, we give out about $95,000 a year to students to support their internships, which really makes a difference in their ability to accept those experiences. And the combination of an outstanding liberal arts education, deep experiential learning, and the community that we craft at Holland means that our students are prepared for what's next. Among the class of 2023, so those students who just graduated less than a year ago, 92.4% were employed or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduation. And that's pretty extraordinary. So when you hear people say a liberal arts education doesn't work or a college isn't a good investment, I hope that you will embody your full Holland spirit and use this information to speak back to that. And if they say, well, where are your students or graduates working? Here are a few of the places where our students are making their careers. It ranges from everything from financial advisors to the CDC, to healthcare companies. We have folks at Disney right now in their leadership program. And some are going into full-time volunteer service like AmeriCorps. So we are really, really excited about that. So of the 92%, two thirds are gonna go right into employment. But another 20% are going to go straight into graduate school. 
And our students are going to amazing programs. They range from the London School of Economics to the University of Tennessee to Virginia Tech just down the road. I absolutely love the fact that over a fifth of our students are so well prepared with the Hollins education that they can immediately go into top notch, really top chair programs like Northwestern, Northeastern, or the University of Virginia. So those are just a few outcomes from the class of 2023. And you'll get to meet a class of 2024 seniors shortly. But I did want to share a little bit of good news about where some of our graduating seniors already know they're heading. So as you can see, among our students, and this was just sort of a random sampling of students that I selected to share with you this evening, we have students who are going to into master's programs in France into business school. Um, some students, like Elizabeth McDonald, has been accepted into a number of film and television writing programs, including USC and Emerson College. Tram has been accepted into PhD programs at North Carolina State and Penn State, while Dion has been accepted into pharmacy school. Shannon has been accepted into the Savannah College of Art and Design writing program. And we have a number accepted into other MFA programs, for example, at the University of Kentucky. And of course, veterinary school remains a big catch for our seniors. So the, this is just a sampling of things we know about our current students who will graduate in June and where they'll head. But not to be outdone, I wanted to also share with you just a few outcomes for some returning students. Um, as you can see, we're beginning to get internships in for them, and they range from the Virginia Wildlife Center to the New York Life Insurance Company, and two of our students will be doing undergraduate research, one at Virginia Tech and another at the University of Missouri. We will have dozens and dozens more of these arriving over the next several weeks, but I just want you to know that the data I share are wonderful, but there are real humans behind that young students who are doing pretty spectacular things. So Lauren, if I have time, I'll go on just a little more and share a little bit about what's happening outside of the classroom. And I'm going to start with a couple of exciting athletic uh, announcements for you all this evening. So our students excel both on, in the classroom, on the field, on the track and in the pool. And as you can see, we have received a number of different accolades, ranging from the fact that 11 of our student athletes have been honored by the college sports communicator as all academic, all district athletes. We were had our cross country team named as an all academic team. Our cross country team also earned a top 20 finish at the NCAA South Regional Meet. And our swimming team was honored as a scholar All-America team for the fall 2023 semester. So I bring that great news to you because it really speaks to the fact that our students are not only excelling in their sport, they're excelling in the classroom. For each one of these awards, there's an academic component that goes along with it. For example, the cross-country team, All-Academic team, they had to have a team GPA of a minimum of 3.1 on a 4.0 scale. Or for the student athletes who were honored as academic all district athletes in their sport, they were recognized not only for their sports performance, but for their performance in the classroom. So a warm congratulations to all of our students who are doing such amazing work in the classroom, as well as in our athletics program. Now, you know, I've become something of a horse lover since I've been at Hollins, just a little bit. And so I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge two spectacular wins for our riding team. Two weeks ago, we won the IHSA Regional Championship. And just this past Saturday, we won Zone 4 Finals. And there's a picture of all those who were competing that day. We, in fact, not only brought home the trophy, we brought home a number of individual awards, and we brought home an invitation to go to nationals in May and try on North Carolina. So a big congratulations to our riding team, which has met with really unparalleled success this year, and a warm congratulations to them. 
But as you know, Holland's is about a lot, the classroom, athletics, but our creative spirits are absolutely alive and well here at Holland. So this past weekend, we had our wonderful 24 hour plays, which were produced by our Student Theater Association. And what happens with a 24 hour play is students get together on a Friday night. I think it started around seven or eight. They have dinner, an author writes, the playwright writes the play, then a director and actors are selected. They rehearse all night long. And then the next evening, 24 hours later, they present their plays. And these four plays were spectacular. And so I was so excited for what our theater students have been doing. We're in the season of the senior theses across academic disciplines, including in theater. So it's a really rich creative time right now on campus. And I had a wonderful opportunity last Friday to participate in a museum exhibit that was curated by a course called Behind the Scenes at the Museum. This course is co-taught by Janine Culligan, the director of the Eleanor Wilson Museum and Professor Stephanie Gibson. And the, the class curated an exhibit thinking about what the Hollins campus looks like over time. What, what, over time, what does Hollins mean over time? It's a wonderful exhibit. This is a cover of the, the program for the exhibit, but it was a real reminder of the deep gifts, the wonderful gifts that our students possess. And as they were presenting their art, I was able to really and truly see how and why our students are able to go out and thrive in the world. And in fact, thriving in the world is really the goal of our strategic plan. So as you all will recall from our December gathering in October, the Hollins University Board of Trustees approved Transforming Learning, Transforming Lives, the Lavavi Oculo Strategic Plan. This plan is comprised of three gears, academic excellence, wellness and access, which when combined together will make Hollins University the nation's leader in economic, social, and civic mobility. And that is, in fact, our vision, that by 2030, Hollins will have implemented integrative learning practices, equity-minded access policies, extensive experiential learning, compassionate challenge, and a holistic wellness focus to meet our mission call and ensure our sustainability. I often tell alums when I meet with them that a lot has changed about Hollins. When you come in and you look at our students and you hear about the wonderful experiences they're having, I think it's easy for alums to say it's a very different place. But the reality is that the beating heart of Hollins is unchanged. In a few short minutes, you'll be able to hear from a couple of students who will reinforce that message. Our students are curious and creative our students want to make the world a better place. Our students are fiercely intelligent. They're driven. They have strong thoughts. They are passionate. I think that was true for each one of you on this call. And the goal of this strategic plan is to make sure it's true for many, many decades to come. And I am so excited to be doing that work alongside our entire team here at Hollins, as well as alongside each of you. So on this next uh, screen, you won't be able to make this out. Don't worry, you'll see it in a lot of magazines over the next seven years. But this is the timeline for our strategic plan. So we didn't just come up with a plan. We came up with a process for implementing that plan to ensure we meet every goal in the strategic plan. In the most recent edition of the Hollins Magazine, you have an opportunity to take a look at sort of how we frame the strategic plan. You'll hear lots about our vision and our hopes. But what I want you to know when you look at that very busy chart is that each and every day we are working to meet the goals of our strategic plan. And we could not do that work without each of you, without our wonderful faculty and staff, and without our students. So thank you for equipping and allowing us to do that work. 
Now to complete all of that work, as you know, we are launching the Lavavi Oculos Comprehensive Campaign. Um, it's a fundraising campaign, the largest campaign in the history of Holland, and is designed to support the strategic plan and to meet our institutional need, vision, and goals. We have a working goal of $250 million that will carry us through June 2030. We are right now in the most talkative, quiet phase I've ever experienced, but I want to tell the world about this great work that we're doing at Holland. So we are continuing our preparation phase that will officially end on June 30th. On July 1, 2024, we go into the quiet phase and then we'll go in to a public phase in July, 2027. So how can you help? Well, there's one very special opportunity on the very near horizon. Next week, in fact, is Holland's Day of Giving, where you can help us move mountains. And so we are so excited for this day. Every gift that you give goes towards the Holland's Fund. You can scan and make your gift. You've probably gotten something in the mail from us already, but we are truly going to move mountains on April 18th. Our goal is to raise $370,000 in a single day, and I know that we can do it, and we are so excited. Lots of challenges out there, lots of fun things planned. Go to the website. Um, there's lots of swag and collateral that you can post with once you've given. It's really going to be a great, a great day. Um, and I do see questions coming in that we we'll be we'll able to answer. Coming in yes, well. nice. Awesome. And then one other thing that I want to be sure I remind this group of, because I know many, many of you are on with us right now, but reunion is coming. Yay! So if you have not already registered, now is your time. If your class year ends in 4 9, 2022 and 2022 four nine and 2022 this is your year so please please stand to register for reunion it's going to be a blast i have had the privilege of serving at a number of colleges i have degrees from three of them and i've never been to a better reunion than what hollands does and so I am super excited for our time together in late May, early June. So please, please register soon. Again, if you're 5'9 or 2022, this is your year. And so now we are going to have a little conversation about questions. We have a few questions okay. that came in. And please, if you all have a question, feel free to drop it in the chat or in the Q&A feature. One of the questions we have from Ellen is, what is the average debt of students for graduation? Always a hot topic. So nationally, the average debt of students at graduation is a little over um, $34,000, $35,000. Hollins is lower than that. And in fact, with the advent or the addition of our HOPE scholarship, which as you all know, means that for students from within a 40-mile radius, once they're admitted to Hollins, if they are from a lower income family, they can attend Hollins tuition free. Because we've added those students into the mix, our um, average debt is now around $20,000 from last year. And that's a pretty sharp decrease from prior years. But even if you look at the national numbers at twenty-nine dollars or $30,000, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is that there is no better investment than a college education. I often hear people talk about the college student debt, but no one talks about new car debt, which is actually out of control in this country, and it's these $40,000 on average, and that car is going to depreciate from the moment you drive it off the lot. A college education will serve you well forever and ever, and so happy to be able to answer that question. Absolutely. Any other questions from our alumni? I see a few people who have raised their hands, but now they've come down, but I'm happy to try to navigate that. Um, you just drop a question right in the chat in the yeah, Q&A. That would probably be, 
the easiest way. Um, but why don't we, while you're navigating yeah. that, can we get to what is truly the highlight um, of the evening and what I think everyone has been waiting for? So I am super excited to introduce you to two amazing students. I think you're on now, yay. Um, I am thrilled to introduce you to our students who are with us this evening. And we have a series of questions we're going to ask them because I think it's one thing when I share what's happening on campus, I hope it's informative. I hope it's good information. I hope you know that it warms your heart but there's nothing like hearing from our students at Holland. So I am delighted to introduce Alexa Holtz. Um, Alexa is a senior gender and women's studies major from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Alexa is currently working on her thesis. And so the fact that she's sharing time with us tonight is a really big deal. Alexa's had a really busy four years here at Holland's, including an amazing internship at Lilith a feminist magazine where she's conducted interviews and written news and, and blog, blog posts. And you've had that internship for a couple of years now, Alexa, yeah. is that right? Two years. Two years. And so I'm so excited about that. And that's fantastic. And Alexa has reinvigorated Holland's Jewish Student Alliance to be a much more active group on campus. And I'm so grateful to you, Alexa, for all of your work. Sitting right next to Alexa is a first year student, Elani Spencer. So Elani is class of 2027 and Elani comes to us from Rochester, New York. Um, Elani is a creative writing major, pondering a theater minor or perhaps a double major, we'll see. What I want you to know about Elani is that she has been selected as Roanoke's very first Youth Poet Laureate. And Ilani now travels around the region, encouraging creative thought and creativity among young people um, across various cities and states here in our uh, cities and across states, I suppose. I'm sure you're helping write poetry in New York and I'm excited. I'm excited to have you both with us this evening. So just a couple of questions. There's uh, lots of Bravo in the chat. Lots, lots of Bravo, Bravo in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. amazing. Yeah. It is wonderful. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Laura. Yeah. I, and I do want folks online to know that celebrating our students is, a, is maybe the very best part of my job. Like we see young students come in the door and then they do these amazing things. And so I want to actually start with Alexa. So you and I started at Collins around the same time, 2020, we were masked up for the first, I guess, 15 or 18 months we were together. Tell me a little bit, Alexa, how has Collins met or exceeded your expectations from when you walked in the door? Collins has met and exceeded my expectations in so many different ways, but what comes to mind for me is how many opportunities there have been for me to get involved on campus and not only get involved, but also to create what I want to see and to be a leader. When I came to Hollins, I would never have identified myself as a leader or thought of myself in that way, but I wanted to get involved. I had a lot of questions about, does this thing exist? Does this thing happen on campus? And a lot of the times I was met with, not right now, but it can happen. And that really empowered me to step into a leadership position. Um, though I didn't feel that I had the experience at that time, I learned that being a leader is also always about being in the learning process. And that's something that I think I'll take with me from Holland's forever, especially as I move into post-grad and looking for jobs where I can continue to grow those leadership skills. That's, that's wonderful. And that, you know, I started with the mission statement and this presentation, mm -hmm. that's our mission is helping our students develop the confidence to believe in their own voice and to be a leader. And leadership is not about, a, you know, a position. It's about how you live and interact with the world. And you've proven that time and time again, Alexa. So Thank you. I'll come back to you in just a second, but I want to go to Elani. Elani, I know it's only been a few months, um, but tell me how thus far has Collins met or exceeded your expectations? Oh, well, Hollands have exceeded my expectations for sure. Um, when I was researching about Hollands, I figured it would have like a very close knit, very supportive community since it's a small liberal arts college. 
and that is definitely true. Um, everywhere I go on campus, I'm welcomed with open arms and I'm always welcomed with a smile as well. Like everyone's really sweet. Um, and it's like, especially the professors, mm -hmm. the professors are always open to like giving me great advice and their doors always open for um, office hours. I've met with plenty of creative writing professors and have gotten so much great career advice from them and just like advice about life, which mm -hmm. has been really nice. And so I really feel like I belong here and I've created like a community here. That's fantastic. And I think your comment about professors will really resonate. Like every alum on this call has a faculty member that changed their lives here at Hollins. And so I think that's I think that's absolutely the case. So Elani, I want to stick with you for a second. So you're just starting your journey. Um, you started out big, renamed you poet laureate. So <laughs> your sights must be set very high. What is something that you really want to accomplish while you're at Hollins? Well, um, being surrounded by other writers has like been a great like motivator and an inspiration for me. And so I would really love to finish the book that I'm currently working on. Um, I want to come out with a poetry book. Mm -hmm. And I think having the support of my professors and my classmates will kind of like push me to go ahead and get that done. So I think I can finish that within the four years that I'm here. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep, yep. So as predicted, Elani's going to jump right out there. So thank you, Elani. Alexa, I want to spend a little time with you reflecting on um, your time at Hollins. And I know I, I said that I want to hear about your proudest accomplishment, but I also want to give space and hold space for you to reflect on what Hollins has meant to you writ large. What have you accomplished? Um, how do you talk about finding your leadership voice, but tell me your reflections about your experiences here at Collins. Collins has absolutely changed me as a person. I've said that since even my first semester, mm -hmm. I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am if I hadn't chose to go to Collins. And I think what I'm the most proud of is my establishment of the Jewish Students Alliance as an official club and organization, mm -hmm. because that was a big part of my college journey was connecting with my Judaism and, um, getting to learn about it in a way I didn't in my girlhood. And something I really wanted was Jewish community. And that wasn't something that was happening actively on campus. So that was one of my big goals. It took about two years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm happy to say that we're an official club. We have about 20 members, a full cabinet, um, and we host multiple events throughout the year. And I'm glad that I made the community I wanted to see. And also I'm creating um, a foundation for future Jewish students to know that they have a place to belong at Hollins as well. That's beautiful, Alexa. You mentioned, um, I know you just mentioned your thesis topic when you mm -hmm. spoke about girlhood, and this is not a question that I gave you in <laughs> advance, but could you talk a little bit about your senior thesis and some of the topics that you're exploring? Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm writing a gender and women's studies thesis, and it is about the transition from girlhood to adulthood. I took a class about girlhood studies in my sophomore year, and I fell in love with that field within GWS. And it is autoethnography, so I use my own experiences to contribute to larger conversations within Jewish studies and gender and women's studies. And I particularly look at the experiences of grief, love, and pleasure within this transition. It's beautiful. Um, it is a beautiful piece. And oh, at least the questions that I've seen and the way you framed it has been stunningly beautiful. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, can I add one more thing? Yeah, sure. um, I got to do a couple of interviews for that as well. And one of my favorite things I got to do at home is that I got to interview President Hinton. Oh, so you're very sweet. Well, I feel like I need to put that in there. <laughs> Thank you. You're very sweet. That was, was my pleasure. And it was, it was, the questions you asked were difficult questions. I mean, this is not an easy, it's not an easy topic. It evokes a lot of emotion when you're thinking about girlhood to adulthood. So it was a, it was a really powerful set of questions that you asked. Mm -hmm. So Elani, you are going to write a book of poetry. Um, you're helping young people in the region learn more about poetry and creative writing. Can you um, tell me a little bit, or tell me one or two things that you want Hollands alums to know about Hollands today? So I saw some of the names come through. I think we have folks as recent as the 2020s, but yeah. some as far back as 
And by far back, I mean wisdom accrues over time. So our wise is the love. We have 79s. I bet we have some stuff. I see 73s. I bet we have some folks from the 60s in this group because Collins alums are amazing. So can you tell our alums one thing you want them to know about Collins today? Well, the first thing that came to mind when I was mulling over this question was Collins feels like an overnight summer camp 24 <laughs> seven like, in the best way possible, because like there's never a dull moment on campus. Like there's mm -hmm. always arts and crafts nights, mm -hmm. karaoke nights, write-ins yeah. at the library. Um, so I always feel like it's just constant fun, um, not just academics. Um, so and I'm sure it was like that years yeah. ago as well. Um, but that's like the biggest thing about Holland's, which is great. That's fantastic. Alums often ask, do the students have fun? And so I'm delighted that you have confirmed <laughs> that students do indeed have fun. Yeah. Alexa, what's one thing you want our alums to know? I hope it doesn't sound too cheesy, but that students want to connect with alums as much as they want to connect with us. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity to work reunion two years in a row, and I got to meet many alums there. And it was such an emotional experience both times, just seeing how Hollins is this thing that ties all of us together in a really beautiful way. And I've also, I've had so many wonderful connections I made with alums. They have two alums have offered me housing in New York when I went to the city for my internship. And I also connected with a Jewish alum recently who was able to sponsor a dinner for the group on campus. So those have been really meaningful parts of my Holland's experience. And I hope to continue to connect with alums, especially as I've become an alum myself yeah. in just about a month. Yeah, that's a big yeah, deal. Yeah. No, we are yeah. super <laughs> excited. We are super excited. And so we're going to um, turn to some Q&A from the audience. So let we me- We don't have any questions right now, President Hinton. We have lots of excitement and celebrating. Um, mm -hmm. Just what a difference that our professors do make. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, very impressed uh, mm -hmm. with Alani. Many wonderful people helped her thrive and learn. Uh, mazel tov to Alexa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so lots, of, oh, Dan is here. So we do have a 69. Oh, yay, yay. Yeah, I told that. you. you yeah, uh, yeah. There you are. I see Susie Mink and Linda Lormer yes. there. So there you go. 74 is celebrating their 50th reunion. Get ready. Wow. Get ready. <laughs> I mean, this is this is the year of years, I have to oh. tell you. They have thrown down the gauntlet. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking about something that Alexa just said about the connection across the years. <laughs> and right now, we have 90 years of living alums from our sweet Winnie who graduated in the class of 1938 to um, our folks who are coming in, who signed up for 2020, they will graduate in 2028. So I want you to just think about that, that you are a part of a chain of heartbeats and hands that span time and place. And that's really special. I, I think that that's really special and that we should never forget that we are not alone in this world. Like that's what I want Alani and Alexa and all of you to know, that we are never alone. Hollands binds us, it tethers our hearts one to the other. It equips us to go out into the world, excited to excel, it equips us to be leaders, but even more, it lets us know that we have a safe place to land here in this valley surrounded by mountains is a home where you are welcome just as you are and where you will be reminded at every opportunity that you are enough. And so I think it's so important for our alums to hear that and to know that. Fantastic. Well, as usual, President Hinton, your presentation was so comprehensive. Um, I, I don't see any questions, but I know we have one more special event we do, we before do. we conclude for the yeah. evening. Well, I just want to say again to everyone how much it means to me that you all make time to be with us. Um, we all have lots of different ways we could use our time. And the fact that you would choose it to come home and hear about what's happening at Hollins means the world. I hope that you know, as I hope all of our students know, that I am so proud to be your president and I love your spirit 
I love going out into the world and telling the world about columns. It is truly an honor and a privilege to do this work. But this evening, the last word is going to go to Ilani Spencer, who is going to share with us a poem that she has written. Lavavi oculos to all, and I turn it over to Ilani Spencer. Hello, everyone. Um, when I was invited to read at this event, I knew I needed to capture the beauty and the spirit of Hollands in my poem, and not just the natural beauty on campus, but the beauty of our campus community. Um, so this is Ode to Hollands. The white tufted Bradford pear trees, smelling of fish and fresh pollen, lean in to hear the gentle stroke of a piano and the sweet la 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 of Talmadge singers dancing on the wind. Students stroll along front quad in the prickling Virginia heat, the sunlight reflecting off the shiny soles of their Doc Martens and metal carabiners. Campus squirrels skitter across the paths, snagging slices of pizza and half-eaten apples and feasting on them in the tall grass. The bones of academic buildings still holding strong, a reminder of the resilient women who came before. And somewhere inside, a student raises their hand like a flagpole. Next door, tucked away in the corners of Wyndham Robertson, students hunch over the glossy pages of textbooks and glowing laptop screens. The steeple of DuPont Chapel watches over the evergreen haven of Beale Garden as peals of laughter ring out like church bells. Here, we are all connected through root networks that ground us and support our growing legacies. The horses graze the dandelion freckled fields before the backdrop of Tinker Mountain, raising its palms toward a sky of green and gold. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much.